Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, in the sports section, the vanity code to add it on the Roku website is one word, Dwyer Boxing News. On iTunes, same thing. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, as paid subscribers know, I have a paid channel here on YouTube. It's Dwyer Sports Betting. Okay, there we actually make picks on NFL games and recommend teasers. Now let's play chess. Today's December 12, 2014. Last night, the Arizona Cardinals won their 11th game of the season. They almost certainly are in the playoffs. Right now, though, believe it or not, if you're a hedge better, you can get the Arizona Cardinals to win the Super Bowl at 20 to 1 odds right that's something I believe people who understand the idea of hedging a play later want to take advantage of understand all the Arizona Cardinals have to do is make the playoffs then you can start betting against them at huge leverage after getting 20 to 1 odds right here but let's back away for a moment and let's ask ourselves, what's really going to happen in the NFC? Statistically, what are the plays and what are the games that I need to be aware of? Right? In my opinion, a big game, a huge game is going to happen next week. I believe it's a foregone conclusion this weekend that the Seattle Seahawks beat the San Francisco 49ers, right? Seattle, in some books, is a double-digit favorite. Understand, Seattle just small the 49ers, that's the word, in the Bay Area on Thanksgiving Day, right? Kaepernick looked like he had no clue, hadn't learned anything about how to beat the Seattle secondary, right? If you go back... And if you look at how Kaepernick did in the NFC Championship game last year, you're going to find out that he had more success running than he did passing the football, throwing multiple picks in that game. Right? Understand the last game they played, the Thanksgiving Day, Richard Sherman had two picks. That's following the pick he had that effectively ended last year's NFC Championship game. Right? Couple that with the fact that Certain players, Vernon Davis, are uninvolved right now in the 49er offense, right? Jim Harbaugh has had ownership criticize his team's effort, right, for that Thanksgiving Day performance, right? Greg Roman has had members of the owner's family criticize his performance as offensive coordinator. The 49ers just lost to their cross-town rivals, the Oakland Raiders, who only won one other game all year. And by the way, that Raider 49er game was not that close. And you would have thought that the Raider defense was the Seahawk defense. That's how puzzled Colin Kaepernick looked, right? And to me, it adds up to one conclusion, especially given that Seattle at home is tough to beat already. And that's that Seattle is going to win their 10th win this weekend so next week just understand that seattle has to play the arizona cardinals in arizona now i believe in that game you have to go with the seahawks why well it's because while the seahawks are starting their starting quarterback russell wilson and their starting running back marshawn lynch assuming neither of them gets injured this weekend against the niners just understand that the arizona cardinals are on their third string quarterback and are on their second string running back i'm not sure if the cardinals are healthy enough to win that game well here's why it's important because seattle has already beaten arizona and if Seattle beats Arizona again and has the tiebreaker with them, right, they would have the same 11-4 and record after next week's game. And if Seattle 
wins their last game of the season. Well, understand Seattle would win the division. They would actually have an opportunity in the playoffs to host that first playoff game. Right? Let me go one step further. Let's talk about the Eagles against the Dallas Cowboys this coming weekend. If you do the math and if you figure out the records, and if you look at the fact that teams like the Detroit Lions have winnable games remaining on their schedule, right? Then I believe the conclusion is really inescapable that the loser of the Cowboy Eagle game this weekend is probably not going to make the playoffs, right? Understand the winner likely goes on to win that division, right? The loser has to hope somehow that Detroit or Arizona or Seattle completely implodes or that the Green Bay Packers implode. I think that's too much to ask, right? Let me say this too. If the Eagles win the game, their last two games of the season would be on the road against the Washington Redskins. Do we even know who the Redskins quarterback is right now? <clears throat> How hurt is Colt McCoy? Let me just tell you, I'm a Giants fan and I can say that I hope RG3 is the starter for the Redskins for several years. Because I don't think he's that good. Right? So if the Eagles beat Dallas, they would then have two road games left. One on the road against the Redskins. I'd say that's a winnable game. The last game's on the road against the New York Giants. You're talking about two teams who are below 500. Think about it. Right? So I would argue that the Cowboys, if they're going to try to leapfrog the Eagles, who've already beaten them, they're going to have to do it this weekend. Right? If they don't, I believe they're out of luck. Let's talk about the Detroit Lions for a second. Right? Understand the Lions already have nine wins. They play at home this weekend against the Minnesota Vikings. They should win that game. Then they go on the road against the Brandon Marshall-less Chicago Bears. I believe they should win that game too. Weather conditions in that game will be key. But I would say the Chicago Bears easily are one of the most disappointing teams this year. Right? Understand Detroit, I believe, would end up with at least 11 wins this year. Another big game on the horizon that we need to circle is the Week 17 game. Detroit against the Green Bay Packers. Right? Understand Detroit's already beaten the Green Bay Packers. If Detroit gets to that game after having beaten the Vikings and the Bears, Detroit conceivably would have a shot at winning the division. Right? I think you need to circle that game because of the fact that when these two teams played before, Detroit won the head-to-head -head matchup. Let's talk about Green Bay. I think Green Bay has a very tough game this weekend. They play Buffalo in Buffalo. Now let me say this. Green Bay is dominant at home. But what if I told you that on the road, Green Bay is not that dominant? Green Bay is lost to Seattle in Seattle by 20. Green Bay lost by double digits against Detroit in Detroit. Green Bay lost by 21 points on the road at New Orleans. Right? Some of the road games they won were a little bit too close for comfort. They beat Miami by a field goal on the road. They beat Minnesota by a field goal on the road. Isn't Green Bay really two teams? The home team 
that can put up 50, five points against the Bears. And then you have the road Green Bay Packers, right? Just understand that if Green Bay loses to Buffalo in Buffalo this weekend, and that's not a foregone conclusion game. There could be consequences and repercussions, especially since Green Bay plays Detroit the last week of the season, right? So to sum up, I believe it's over for the San Francisco 49ers. Stick a fork in them. I believe it'll be over for the loser of the Dallas Cowboy Philadelphia Eagle game. Stick a fork in them. Man. right I believe Seattle is more viable than people want to believe understand if Green Bay stumbles there's even a scenario by which the Seattle Seahawks could get home field in the playoffs I believe Arizona is already in the playoffs right with 11 wins Arizona should already be there I believe Arizona has a very winnable game, the last game of the season, and that's in San Francisco against the 49ers in what likely will be the last game of the Jim Harbaugh era. Right, so I believe Arizona's in the playoffs. Right, the question is whether they're in the playoffs as the NFC Western champions or whether they're in the playoffs as a wild card. Right, so take a hard look at the NFC. Just understand, if you're looking for leverage right now, incredibly, with only two games to go, Las Vegas is giving you 20 to 1 odds on a team that has 11 wins. Think about it. Let me say this too. Yesterday they played the Rams. How good is that defense? That defense gave up six points. That defense held the Rams to less than 70 rushing yards. Think about it, right? I'm not saying Arizona wins the NFC, far from it. What I'm saying to you, though, is that Las Vegas is giving you something like more than four times the odds they're giving you on the Seattle Seahawks. Right? They're giving you 20 to 1 odds on a team that already looks like they're in the playoffs and has a game left against the San Francisco 49er team that just lost to the Oakland Raiders, folks. Right? Think about it. If Arizona splits their last two games, if they split their last two games, they win 12 games on the year. They're off, Vegas is offering you 20 to 1 on that team right now. If they beat Seattle next week in a home game, they win the NFC West. They actually host the game in the playoffs. You're getting 20 to 1 odds right now. Right? People who go game by game aren't going to like what I'm suggesting here. People who don't understand hedging, who think you make a bet and then you just sit back and see if it wins as opposed to making a bet for strategic purposes of hedging later aren't going to like what I have to say. But if you're someone who understands the concept of betting not a team but a situation, if you're someone who understands that sometimes you bet simply to lock in odds so you could bet against the team later, just ask yourself, when's the last time you had an opportunity to take an 11-win team at 20 to 1 odds this late in the season, right? Knowing that a lot of these other teams face tough games, right? Keep in mind, if Green Bay is going to play Detroit the last week of the season, one of those teams has to lose that game. Just, just food for thought, right? That would further any loss by either of those teams would further solidify Arizona's hold on a playoff spot, right? Understand, too, just hypothetically, even if Arizona didn't make the playoffs, if you lock in 20 to 1 odds here, you could bet against Arizona during the regular season. 
in either the Seahawk game or the 49er game and lock in profits. You could even wait till the last game of the season. If they tell you Arizona has to win this game to make the playoffs, if there's any conceivable possibility that Arizona could miss the playoffs, you could put money on the 49ers, and if the 49ers win that game, make back more than you've bet on the futures prop on Arizona at 20-1 to 1 leverage. So give it a look, right? Understand betting really is like chess. Just understand that all we're trying to do is to pick situations. Right now, the books are giving you 20 to 1 odds on an 11 win team. Also, don't sleep on the big games coming up. Right? Philadelphia against Dallas this weekend. Right? Seattle against Arizona in Arizona next weekend. Right? Detroit, an indoor team, visiting Green Bay, the last game of the season, right? Those are three huge games right now. Don't kid yourself. The playoffs don't start in a few weeks. The playoffs start right now, right? They're already underway. I believe you need to consider Dallas at Philly to be a playoff game this weekend. Let me know what you think. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And if you're interested in bets and stuff like that, um, a monthly subscription, take a look at my pay site here on YouTube, Dwyer Sports Betting, three words, not one. Thanks for stopping by.